your brother Alan Riadeneko welcoming you to the really really knowing God channel as I lead this fellowship of information and inspiration in the knowledge of God. It's all powered by the Pastor Alan Riadeneko Center for Age Inspiration. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gemstone upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. I shine in truth this morning on looking good is Godlike. Coming from Job chapter 38 to 40. Chapter 38 through 40. We are praying right now, and after that, we jump into it together. Glorious God and King, we just bless you. You are the maker of heaven and earth. God, everything we know, the things we read of, the things we uh, study and all those things, they were just made by you. And on account of that, we say we bow in the name of Jesus Christ. We spend a few minutes together with your people now. We ask, oh God, that you help us at that which we do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, there we go. Now, um... The Lord now answered Job, you know, and, and began to talk. Now, from here, essentially what has happened was that God now began to address Job, but what he was doing, he was now using what I would call the wonders of creation and the mysteries of creation, okay, to let Job see that whatever you think you know, is small because you also already you know there are several things that you cannot explain there are several things about uh, nature about the creation that you know that even you you cannot explain so if you cannot explain those ones why are you bothering yourself trying to explain what you don't even understand the root of it or the basis of it or you know things like that amen so that was essentially what happened after god began to speak to job so we're going to just uh, you know get nuggets here and there from there learn something or the other by the grace of god as we've been doing and move forward amen so the first one the lord answered job out of the whirlwind and said now um this out of the whirlwind each time i see it i just wonder exactly how you know um there must have been a whirlwind and god spoke from inside the whirlwind. didn't they run away <laughs> you know didn't he scare them or what was the whirlwind? was it continuous and ongoing while the lord was talking and they stayed there or that it was a uh, continual it would come it would stop it would come again i don't even understand but you see that's what the bible says it says out of the whirlwind i just cannot picture exactly how they managed <laughs> you know but from verse 2 it says um who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Ah, this is interesting. Now it says that uh, what he calls counsel here is what we call what we often call wisdom or discretion, whatever. It says who darkens counsel, who darkens wisdom, who darkens um, discretion, uh, who darkens. Uh, um, what else do we, we do we call these things? Anyway, wisdom with words without knowledge. Now some of us we will um, define knowledge as the appropriate or the optimal application of knowledge. In other words, you cannot talk about wisdom where there is no knowledge. <clears throat> Therefore, um, what we are talking about here is that knowledge and wisdom, they are tied together. So when there is no knowledge, certainly wisdom will be darkened. It's not going to work. It's not going to flow, you know, and all that. So, yeah, that's what we are talking about here. Uh, it darkens counsel, darkens wisdom, you know, we will be words without knowledge. So that's when there is no knowledge there. The light that you are going to use to bring about wisdom, it disappears. They are connected. You cannot say you are wise, you know, without having uh, knowledge in that particular area that we are focusing upon it cannot be knowledge and wisdom they are linked together praise the lord and um, let's move forward in verse 7 it says when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of god shouted for joy i want to just quickly refer to something here these sons of god many times is used to represent angels okay at times uh, even when the angels are fallen they still bear that title to an extent in genesis chapter 6 uh, for example, um, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a um, place where people ask me commonly, uh, who are these? Genesis chapter two, chapter six, verse two. It says, uh, so and so that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and on and on. And then there were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, it was talking about spirit beings. If you remember at the beginning of Job. We also saw this thing that was when they gathered that and Satan came among them as well. 
Um, now there was a certain day, Job 1, 6, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said, you remember that, you know. So I just thought I should quickly mention that and um, kind of re-emphasize or re-establish it in the minds of uh, some of us. Amen. In verse 15 of 38, he makes a statement. He says, from the wicked, their light is withheld, and their upstra- up- raised arm is broken. Light suddenly is withheld from the wicked. In other words, you can find the wicked operating and doing, you know, wicked things for a long time. Suddenly, it now begins to look like a fool at the end of the day. That when, that's when that light is suddenly withdrawn from them. <clears throat> and so when you see people who are acting wickedly and doing things that amaze you and shock you, how can a person be this bad? Remember, a day is coming when all that whole thing that he's been doing, suddenly things will so happen for him that it will not look like, oh, you really? I can't believe that this can happen to you. Yeah, that's what happens. Their light suddenly gets withdrawn, you know, and then it ends up that way for them. <coughs> Excuse me so much for for 38. We go to 39 now, and that is taking us to um, verse 13 of, I don't think, um, it was just talking about, like I said, all the different, you know, amazing things of nature and creation. And he was asking him, do you know how this happened? Do you know how that happened? You don't know why so, so, and so, you know. And he just went on like that. That's um, a lot of them. But that's some of them we should talk about. So in 39, verse th- from verse 13, he said, The wings of the ostrich have waved proudly, but are, are wings um, and opinions like the kindly stalks, for she leaves her e- eggs on the ground and warms them in the dust. She forgets that a foot may crush them or that a wild beast may break them. She treats her young harshly as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without concern because God deprived her, deprived her of wisdom and did not endow her with understanding. But when she lifts herself on high, she scorns the horse and his rider. Let me try to break this down and use our own uh, uh, language for it. What he's saying is this, that the ostrich... It's big and um, um, but when she when she lays her eggs, she doesn't uh, hide her eggs like some other birds will go and hide her eggs. She just you know digs a little yeah, I don't know then they are twelve inches you know and then yes and makes a box like twelve inches or thereabout lays her eggs inside those and to her she has already kept her eggs <laughs> with with that. Uh, you know, he would dig a little bit, like 12 inches, and put the egg. You won't cover it with anything, you know, or maybe very, very light sand, yeah. And um, it says that he doesn't consider that some foot may, may break the eggs or some other animal may, you know, and all that. And by the time the eggs are hatching, I don't think she even, you know, lays upon the I think it's the male that goes to lay upon the egg, if I remember very well. Yeah, so she doesn't even care about what happens. And then the young uh, of, of it, she doesn't care so much about them. He says, but when it comes to speed, that the ostrich has a speed that, that, um, that uh, belittles the speed of a horse. That's what the Bible is saying here. In other words, what we are learning from this particular passage is this, that when it comes to uh, uh, each person's giftings and att- attributes, the Lord distributes to each of his creatures according to the, the way he likes. Let's put it that way. The way he likes, you know, he, he gives this this one's this kind of attribute, and this this one may have beauty but no brains. This one may have plenty of brains but not quite beauty, you know, and all that. You also see it among dogs. You see one not beautiful but has a lot of brain, you know, and things like that. Yeah, that's what he's saying here. That God distributes these qualities and attributes to each each person or each creature as he likes, according to what he has determined. Praise the Lord. And he says something to us that our strengths, God gave them to us. And therefore, you also have weaknesses. But then those your strengths build upon your strengths and make the best of it. Look at this ostrich. His strength is his long legs and the speed with which he can run with those long legs. Build upon those ones. Amen. You may not be somebody that has so much beauty, but you have plenty of brain. Build upon the brain. You may be somebody that doesn't have so much brain or have plenty of beauty. Build upon the beauty. Praise the Lord. And, you know, that's the, this, this bird has no spirenting instinct at all. You know, but when it begins to chase, and I've seen um, situations where the ostrich was chasing something. Very, 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 very... Um, 
serious chase, you know, and he doesn't get tired. He will continue to chase, <laughs> you know, and all that. Very interesting, but it's, it's a big lesson about God. Let's go to chapter 40 so that we can round up sometime very soon um, um, here. And uh, the one I picked from 40 is that after God had said a number of things to him there, Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. How can I answer you now? I lay my hand over my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yes, twice, but I will proceed no further. I see. You know, <laughs> when he, he finally saw his folly, in the face of glaring things that he has always observed and he has always seen, but he never really thought through on them. And you know it happens to us. There are certain things that happen around us. We just take them for granted. We see them all the time and all. But you see, we don't think any further. We just assume, well, that's the way it is. We don't even thought through on it. And that's why it says he, he lays his hand upon his mind. He can't talk again, you know, and all that. And it happens to us a lot. A lot of things are around us. We haven't just taken time to think through on some of those things. And therefore, uh, we cannot go far in terms of understanding those things or uh, deriving some lessons from, from, from those observations because we haven't taken time to think through on it. That's what happened with Job here, you know. And then... Um, um, from verse 9, have you an arm like God, or can you thunder like a voice like his? Then adorn yourself with majesty and splendor, array yourself with glory and beauty, disperse the rage of your wrath, and look upon everyone who is proud to humble him, and everyone who is proud to bring him low, you know, and on and on and on like that. You know what I found out? Here was God flexing that that's the language we use now <laughs> he was saying that you have my kind of beauty do you have my kind of splendor do you have my kind of power can you make the proud you know learn a big lesson can you you know and all that the one i want to focus upon is the way he describes his majesty and splendor and his glory and beauty verse 10 you know that's god talking about himself you know that was looking good is godlike when you also adorn yourself, when you make yourself look good, when you make yourself look glorious, when you make yourself look beautiful, yeah, you are doing God-like stuff. <laughs> Not only has he done it, he was also telling Job, okay, you do your own dressing, let's compare. You, you, you do the best you can do to yourself, and let's see who looks better. Let's see, <laughs> praise the Lord. That was God, you know, and I think it says something to us, especially in, in a day and time when some people will say, oh, God does not want us to adorn ourselves, you don't, you know, no, those things are not um, complete understanding of the Bible. Here was God who was saying, you really think, okay, let's see, let us, I've spoken about some of my creation. Let's talk about me, myself now. Let's see, go and dress yourself up. Let us see whether you match. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I think I like that. He's saying something to us that, that you know, when you look good, when you really do look good, you are just behaving according to, according to your father. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so very much for sharing time with us today. I trust I'm going to see you tomorrow. Thank you. God bless you.